cultural tradition, an astonishing artistic technique, a complex and profound belief system, the Dogon of Mali. The art of the Dogon exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art encompasses a wide variety of objects donated by the collector Lester Wonderman, ranging from ceremonial masks and forged iron ornaments to ritual sculptures and architectural adornments. More than evocative works of art, however, these artifacts are central to the Dogon belief system and as such seem charged with extraordinary faith and vitality. I'm Philippe de Montebello, director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Because of the generous gifts of Lester Wonderman over the last decade, the Metropolitan Museum's collection of Dogon sculpture has been so enriched that few American or European museums can equal it, either in range of objects or quality. This exhibition owes its existence to Mr. Wonderman's enthusiasm for the Dogon people and their art. Since 1957, he has immersed himself in their culture and travel around the world to collect these superb examples of their art. Having lived among the Dogon, having been accepted by them as a friend and later a village elder, he has learned the traditions and rituals in which their art plays a major role. Mr. Wonderman's donations to this museum are a sincere expression of his wish to share the enrichments these objects have brought to his life. So now, let's explore the world of the Dogon and discover the marvelous vitality of their art. Judging from accounts passed on from generation to generation, the Dogon migrated within the ancient empire of Mali during the 15th and 16th centuries to one of the most spectacular geological features of West Africa, the Bandiagara Cliffs. Then as now, the isolated cliffs provided a natural bulwark to settle against in this semi-arid land. Here the Dogon developed a richly complex society, rooted in a vast body of myths about creation, the struggle between order and disorder, and mankind's place within the universe. These beliefs inspire all aspects of Dogon art, including elaborate ritual ceremonies and dances, such as this known as the Dhamma. Performed only once every 10 to 15 years, the Dhamma is intended to establish all those who have died in that time as ancestors and to celebrate the new life that has filled the void left by their departure. To the Dogon, souls of the departed are not destined anywhere profoundly different from the life they have left. They have simply moved up higher in the social structure, into a shadowy realm closer to God and other spirits considered the children of God. This Kanaga mask is commonly worn at the Dhamma dance. It may symbolize the arrangement of the universe, with the upper crossbar representing the sky and the lower one, the earth. Ritual masks are crafted from a variety of materials. They depict various forces in the universe. This fine example of a foreign warrior mask carved out of wood might have been used in an amusing pantomime of a mock battle that is a special feature of the Dhamma. Cliff paintings renewed from year to year generally depict Dogon masks and are found in sheltered areas where the masks are stored and where certain puberty rites are performed. According to Dogon oral history supported by archaeological evidence, when they first arrived in the region, the escarpment was inhabited by people the Dogon called Telem, which simply means, we found them. Like their predecessors in the cliff region, the Dogon entombed their dead in the caves that riddled the rock face. 
Above the Dogon villages, skeletal remains and artifacts of the Telem were discovered. Many objects were entombed to comfort the Telem dead, among them a few neck rests, some of the oldest existing wooden objects in West Africa. This projection from the center post is wonderfully ambiguous. It could be an outstretched arm, a long-necked bird, or even a horse's head. Pottery bowls with feet on bases, a design not adopted by the Dogon, were found in caves just below those used for communal burials, and are believed to have been used in Telem funeral ceremonies. Certain Dogon artworks, as distinguished from those of the Telem, more clearly resemble these terracotta sculptures excavated roughly a hundred miles from the Bandiagara cliffs. Note the similarity of features such as the protruding rimmed eyes, straight nose, broad mouth and jutting beard shared by the terracotta and Dogon figures. Even the sheathed knife in the upper arm is a detail common to both. The terracotta sculptures were tested and found to date from the 12th to the 17th century, indicating that the Dogon style was popular during the same period. The inland delta region at the confluence of the Niger and Bani rivers, where the terracotta sculptures were found, contains architectural features that also resemble the Dogon techniques. These links between Dogon art and that of the inland Niger Delta suggest cross-cultural influences dating from antiquity. <laughs> Extensive travel and trade seems to have been the norm among ancient African peoples even as it is today. The irresistible draw of market day continues to open avenues of cultural exchange and to blur ethnic and artistic distinctions. The most striking feature of this remarkable sculpture is the sharp contrast between the naturalism of the head and the abstraction of the rest of the figure. The one remaining arm and the torso have been reduced to geometrical shapes. These two modes of artistic expression do not reflect varying levels of skill, different periods, or regional styles in Dogon art. Rather, they are a matter of aesthetic choice. The blacksmiths of West Africa are craftsmen with special talents and a unique social status. Revered and well rewarded for their ability to forge iron tools, ornaments and ritual objects, Dogon smiths alone are freed of the obligation to farm the land. Ever since the Dogon migrated to the cliff region, they have raised livestock and farmed the savanna planting cotton and grains during the short, rainy season. In this dry climate, the main building material is clay, mixed with sand and straw. Dogon villages nestled against the cliffs invariably echo the severe geometry of the sheer rock face. A clan leader's residence is distinguished by the niches in its facade. Edifices with this design are shrines that contain altars and wooden sculptures. Skilled in wood carving as well as ironwork, it is the blacksmiths who are responsible for the entire body of Dogon sculpture. For centuries, they have fashioned the diverse objects that are central to the Dogon spiritual world, often with arresting mastery.
The purpose of these sculptured figures is to honor the dead and to thank or petition the celestial hosts. In Dogon's sacred rituals, the sculptures are anointed with libations of their staple food, millet porridge, various plant oils, animal blood, and other sacrificial materials thought to be imbued with a vital essence. With use over time, the objects develop a variety of patinas, often becoming thickly encrusted, making their surfaces an indication of their intended meaning. The various attitudes of the sculptures are further clues to their purpose. This pleasingly symmetrical seated figure covering its face may well have been placed on a family altar to convey and perpetuate a sense of mourning for a deceased relative. Figures with raised arms are pervasive in Dogon art. The gesture is open to interpretation, but in the arid sub-Saharan region where rain falls only a few months each year, it is plausible to construe the motion as a plea for storm clouds to draw near and open. The raised arms gesture is ambiguous, especially in this highly abstracted figure. It might express yearning, grief, or joy. Sculptured wooden planks like this seem to have been leaned against altars. One side is often more smoke blackened and encrusted with sacrificial materials than the other. Dogon sculptures play a major part in sacred rituals, being the primary medium through which prayers are meant to reach the spirits of Dogon ancestors, who in turn are thought to influence the ultimate forces of the universe. <laughs> to the Dogon, all living things have a tangible power, a life force which can be distilled and used to improve the effectiveness of the sculptures as conduits to the spirit world. As the vital power of living things is applied, the spiritual force of the ancestor, as well as those making the sacrifice, is increased. Many sculptures become so densely encrusted with sacrificial matter that the forms become all but obscured. This beautifully detailed figure of a woman with mortar and pestle uncharacteristically captures a rather mundane slice of life. Dogon art and African art in general tends to symbolize rather than depict. In contrast to much European figurative art, 
the rendering of individual facial expressions or emotions, for example, is rare. Why then this seemingly frozen moment in time? Perhaps the sculpture serves as an acknowledgement of the laborious, life-sustaining work performed by a beloved wife before she died. These sculptures are like visual equivalents of the funeral orations about women's basic daily tasks, as in this example. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for working in the fields. Thank you for having children with the help of God. Thank you for the food you prepared. Thank you for the meat. Thank you for the millet beer. Thank you for the water. Childbearing is one of the most common themes in Dogon art. And as this highly stylized figure of a woman with twins may suggest, fertility and childbearing are of great importance in Dogon culture. In fact, it is not uncommon for a man to increase his family by having more than one wife. Twins also have a mythological significance based on beliefs about creation. Because of this, twins are thought to be endowed with a vital force, which will bring prosperity and fertility to their family. This refined, complex, beautifully balanced sculpture of a seated couple depicts the heart of the family, the husband and wife. The symmetry of detail, such as the arrow quiver on the man's back, reflecting the baby on the woman's, and the woman's lip ornament, echoing the man's beard, unites the two figures and closely equates the male and female roles in Dogon society. By transforming the figures into elongated geometric shapes, yet retaining their sexual identity, the artist has strengthened the equation. This concept of duality, which is rooted in mythology, deeply influences Dogon family life. The total population of roughly a quarter of a million Dogon is generally divided into villages of 500 or less. A typical Dogon village is subdivided into clans, which contain dozens of families, each with a male leader. Advanced age commands respect in Dogon society, and just as each family is led by the most mature man, every clan is ruled by its eldest male, who acts as a father figure to his extended family. Dogon men often congregate in a meeting house to discuss village matters. The shady roofs are held up by richly carved posts. In this example, the rounded breasts dominate. The arms have to detour around them to hang down at the sides. The familiar motif of a couple standing side by side on the support post seems more fully realized than the schematic low relief figures most often found. The posts are short because the men's meeting houses are low ceiling to prevent standing. The seated position is thought to promote harmony among clan leaders. 
This meticulously rendered carving of a horse and rider is most likely a depiction of such an honored clan head riding an animal that has been traditionally associated with great prestige throughout West Africa. The figure's raised arm evidently once brandished a weapon such as a spear, suggesting a warrior chief and recalling the invasions repelled by the Dogon hundreds of years ago. Carved from a single block of wood, the piece is beautifully detailed, even to the thongs that hold amulets around its neck and extend down the back. This unusually realistic embellishment may be further evidence that the piece was meant to commemorate a specific leader. Artworks of the Dogon, whether they be homages to ancestors or spiritual catalysts, are, in every case, bridges connecting this harmonious, independent society to its complex system of beliefs. As we have seen, the art of the Dogon is intricately woven into the rich fabric of their spiritual lives. If works of art reflect social values, elicit a profound emotional response, project a collective faith, then these objects from the Lester Wonderman collection do constitute one of the rarest and most enduring of treasures. I hope you've enjoyed the art of the Dogon. I'm Philippe de Montebello for the Metropolitan Museum of Art.